Hey, JMC6000 here in the JMC garage for another video. And what we're going to be talking about today, first off, I want to say Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to all those online. Thank you for your love, support, all the comments. Been trying to get to each and every one of those. But what I wanted to talk about today is this right here. In fact, I want to talk about two versions of what you find in 90% of American households today. Uh, and that is the natural gas furnace. Some are powered by propane, but we're going to focus on natural gas. That's what I run in my house here this morning. Or this morning. Anyway, no matter. It's actually in the afternoon. But anyway, talking about, well, this morning when you guys see this, talking about the natural gas furnace, and there's mainly two types. You have an 80% efficiency, and then you have a 90-plus efficiency, and there's various ones within that 90-plus. They start at 92 uh, they can go up to 94, 96, 95, all the way up to 98 is the top I've seen. There's been rumors that there's a 99 efficiency uh, gas furnace running around. I haven't seen that yet. The highest I've seen is 98. But let's go in and break it up into two groups, and then we're going to kind of discuss the, the differences and the pros and the cons of each one. How's that? We're going to try and fit it into a less than 10-minute video. Here we go. So let's focus on the 80% efficiency furnace before it jumps up to the 90. And maybe in the process of this, we might see this thing fire on. We'll see what happens. Uh, but 80% efficiency furnaces, uh, natural gas versions, are pretty much very simple. Uh, they're very cost effective. If you want to go and replace one in your house, they don't cost very much at, compared to the higher efficiency brethren. And how they work is very simple. So I'm going to go over how they work real briefly here. And I'm going to go over the pros and cons of an 80%. I already listed some of the pros. But let me go over some things. So how this furnace works. And I, if you remember, I've done a furnace video several years back on a furnace that was in my uh, modular house. It was a mobile home furnace done by Noradyne. But this particular one is actually... Uh, made by Carrier. It's their builder grade version, also known as Payne. P A N Y, or no, P A Y N E is how it's pronounced. Payne. Anyway, it's their builder grade version, uh, but it's actually the same company uh, that makes Carrier, that makes Bryant. Uh, they they own this, all this. So I believe it's ICP, if I remember correctly. Anyway, how this furnace works is very, very simple. So uh, you have natural gas coming in. Coming into the gas valve, uh, when it calls for heat, what it does is, number one, it'll fire up the inducer motor. And what that does is it'll clean out any remaining, you know, gas or air or whatever, and it kind of gets some fresh air going through the system out the stack. So as the inducer motor fires, that's spinning, causing some fresh air to come in. And then once it does that for maybe about 30 seconds, it'll call for heat. Well, I'm sorry, it's already calling for heat. It'll call for the hot surface ignition, um, a hot surface igniter, which is in here, which will come on. And that'll come on for about 30 seconds. And once that gets at the full temperature, um, the computer, uh, once it sees that the pressure valve is closed, the computer will also call for the gas valve to open. Once the gas valve opens, the gas shoots out through this uh, to where does it go here? It's actually in the back of the gas valve through the tube and then shoots through these. Oh, here it comes. We get to see it in action. Here we go. Now it just called for heat. The inducer motor is on. Son, if you want to get a shot down there, you're going to see the hot surface igniter come on. You should see it coming on right about now. Yeah, see that? it's coming on. In fact, I'm going to do this. Then it's going to, after it sees that, it's going to open up the gas valve. Perfect timing. Now, once it establishes a flame, there's a flame sensor in here. Once it establishes a flame, it'll turn the hot surface igniter off and it'll continue to run on its normal position. Now, after about 30 seconds to a minute, it'll the blowers inside this cabinet here will turn on the blower, which will run warm air over the heat exchanger and out through the house. All right, you got a couple safeties within this furnace. You have a, a, a safety here. This right here is a temperature sensor. If this gets too hot, it'll kill the gas valve going to it. There's also a rollout sensor in here, right here. And usually there's a second one, but we have one right here. I believe there's one on top. 
if it senses flame coming back this way, it'll cause the gas valve to shut off. And there's also a temperature sensor over here that if it senses it to get too hot, it'll cause the gas valve to shut off. Anyway, I said all that to say this. Let me turn this light back on. My son's got it for me. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> I said all that to say this. This is a basic operation of a typical 80% efficiency natural gas furnace in most homes today. Now, how it works is very simple and basic. You only have one pressure sensor and this senses pressure that it actually tells a computer if the inducer motor is actually working. Because when the inducer motor turns on, it actually causes a negative pressure which works a vacuum, uh, which causes the switch to open or close contacts which actually tells a computer if this is running or not by sensing vacuum. Anyway, on a 90 plus percent efficiency furnace, it kind of works the same way, but a little bit more different. Um, the principle is the same. On a 90 percent efficiency furnace, you have more than one pressure sensor. You usually have two, sometimes three, so it's a little bit more complicated. It senses pressure in different areas. And then also, uh, usually on an over 90% efficiency furnace, they're actually called condensing furnaces. And the reason why that is, is on a traditional furnace, the heat exchanger, if you can think of it this way, it's shaped uh, almost like an M. As you got it down here, then it'll come up like this, and then it'll come up and over, and then out through here and through the stack. 80% efficiency, 20% of your fuel is actually going out through the stack. 20% of your heat is going out through the stack. And only 80% is being used to heat your home. On a 90 plus efficiency furnace, we're actually able to squeeze out more heat energy out of that fuel to where it's a little bit more efficient. As a result of that, it condenses. When hot air meets cold air, what does it do? It condenses. So there, there you need to be able to take care of that condensing, that water that comes from that. In fact, Natural gas, when it burns naturally, it actually produces water vapor. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these when, when it's really cold out and you see one of these are on and you see the stack up top, you actually see steam coming out the stack. Why? Because natural gas naturally produces water vapor as it burns. Well, when we get more heat out of it, it'll condense more. And as a result of that, you have to have a, a way to capture that water on a 90 plus efficiency furnace. So. You actually have lines that will go out and you have to take care of that condensing water. You don't have to worry about that on 80% efficiency furnace, but on 90 plus, you do. And I've seen many furnaces, the water would back up, cause the furnace to shut off. That's why you have multiple um, uh, pressure sensors and different things on those furnaces. It's a little bit more involved, but they are more efficient. So let's go through the pros and cons. How much time we got left, son? A couple minutes, probably. Like two, like one. Hey, hey. All right, let's go through the pros and cons of each furnace while we're doing that. So I kind of give a rundown of how a natural gas furnace works, the differences between 80 and 90, very briefly, very quick. So let's go through a couple pros and a couple cons of each one. On an 80, a couple pros. One, if you need to replace it, they're pretty inexpensive. I mean, furnaces are not cheap. They're going for, you know, a, a typical natural gas furnace will go for about uh, close to a grand to maybe a little bit over. Number two, they're very simple in operation. Um, one of the nice things about 80% efficiency furnaces, you'll just go and go and go and go. You won't have to do much maintenance to them. And then finally, number three, not only they're very simple in operation, but also with an 80% efficiency furnace, they, can, they pretty much can be placed anywhere. You don't have to worry about taking care of condensate or anything like that. It can be placed anywhere. Now, a couple cons about an 80% efficiency furnace. Number one, they're noisier. So in my garage here, I don't really have to worry about this noise because it's in a garage. My room, my bedroom is on the other side of this wall. I can hear this when it fires on at night because my bed, the headboard is actually facing this wall. So I can hear it when it fires on at night. Praise the Lord. Uh, number two, even though they're noisier, uh, also they're not as efficient. I mean, that's kind of a given. They're not, that's another con, they're not as efficient. You know, if it's a 60,000 input, BTU input going into for fuel, you're only gonna see about 55,000 go out for heat. I'm sorry, not even that. It'll, it'll be about 48 to 50,000 go out for heat because they're a little bit inefficient. Oh, now it's just shutting off. 
it's going to go in and purge, get all the, and now that's going to shut down. Anyway, so that's another thing. And another con to one of these furnaces, besides the, uh, they're a little bit inefficient, uh, besides they're, they're not as quiet as a 90 plus efficiency furnace, um, another con is the fact that uh, this exhaust stack does get pretty hot. Depending on where you are in the garage, it's not going to matter. In fact, I want it to get a little bit warmer. But it may be in a space where space is kind of tight. You know, you got to find some way to insulate this. Usually, they'll do a double wrap on this exhaust pipe. Anyway, that's some cons to a 80% efficiency. Now, some pros and cons to a 90 plus efficiency furnace. Number one, pro. Let's go over some pros. Pros, I would say they're more efficient, which is nice. They're more efficient. You get able to squeeze much more heat energy out of your BTU of, of fuel that's going in. Number two is they're quieter. Because of how they're designed and because of the way they're designed, they're actually quieter running versus an 80% efficiency furnace. Um, if I had a 90 here, I probably wouldn't hear it as often as I do this guy when it turns on. And then finally, number three, um, What's nice is that the exhaust piping can be done without having this uh, metal piping. It could be done with PVC because the, the, the flue gas temperature is lower because you're, more of it, uh, more of the uh, temperature is going to the house versus going out the flue. So the exhaust gas is lower. You can use PVC piping. Same stuff you would use for uh, your, you know, your drain pipe can be used to vent out um, for the furnace. Now some cons for the 90% plus efficiency furnaces is number one, they're more expensive. If you're looking to replace one, they're more pricier. You're starting at about 15 to a little over two grand, if not more so, on a furnace. Number two, you have to worry about where the condensate's going. You have to worry about not only if you have a central air where that condensate goes, but also on those one of those furnaces, you have to worry about where the condensate goes on those. And that condensate water is actually very acidic. It's very sick because, again, you're burning natural gas. Natural gas, in essence, has some heavy metals while it burns, and it makes the water, the condensate water, very acidic that's coming out of the furnace. And number three, they're a little bit more complicated. Again, you have more moving parts. you got more pressure sensors. you got, uh, you know, you got to take care of the condensate water. If that happens to back up, it can cause issues with the furnace running. They're not as reliable. They involve, they involve a little bit more maintenance versus the 80% efficiency furnace. So these are the things you got to weigh into, pros and cons of an 80 versus a 90 plus and what you need for your house. This time of year, many people are replacing their furnaces. I know it's the middle of winter, but many shops are running, hey, if you buy an air conditioner, you can get a furnace free. If you buy a furnace now, you can get an air conditioner installed for free, stuff like that. When I'm looking into my new home, uh, hopefully here next month, I got to do the same thing for my house. I got to look at getting a furnace installed. Why? Because it's a 94 and it still runs the original furnace and air conditioning system. Definitely needs to be replaced. So I'm going to be documenting that as the time comes. But anyway, I just wanted to go through that. Many people have questions about it. Again, this is JMC 6000, JMC Garage. If you have any questions, comments, please leave that. I'm going to look for those. I'm going to be able to answer those. Have a wonderful, well, I'm sure you already had a wonderful Christmas. Have a blessed new year. There's a lot more videos that are on the way. Can't wait to bring them to you in the new year. It's going to be absolutely exciting. So if you haven't, comment, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification every time because I upload a video every single Wednesday morning. All right, guys, be blessed. Have a wonderful day.